Welcome to the good life. Uh. Welcome to the good life. The wait is over. Welcome to the good life. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on The Good Life Friday, and you know I like to warm your heart. I like to fill your souls, and I like to open your mind to living differently in the world, because that's what The Good Life is all about. And we are here on Good Life Friday, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Later in this hour, I have one of my favorite people, Dr. Calvin Mackey, and he's going to be here. Because we were having a short conversation, long story short, our kids play basketball in the same little fall ball league, so I get to see him a lot. And we were discussing, you know, entrepreneurship and kids. And it's really sad because, you know, we teach our our, our kids to, like, you know, follow a straight line and, and do this. And we don't nec- we teach our children how to get a job, but we don't always teach our children how to make money, which are two entirely different things. So we're going to be here talking, you know, right after the break around 920. So make sure you stay tuned because we're going to teach our children how to make money because that is the good life. And also the good life is about getting out of town when you need to. I have Kaylee Roy here from Evacuteer and I'm really excited to have her. But before we jump in this conversation, what's the most important thing that I need you all to do tomorrow is to early vote. Early voting starts tomorrow, Saturday, October 10th. It will be through Saturday, October 17th. All locations for early voting will be closed on Sunday the 11th. So it's Saturday to Saturday, X out Sunday. You know, the Saints play, you know, NFL is on. We got to all take a break. It just kind of is what it is. But you can early vote at City Hall at 1300 Perdido Street and at Algiers Courthouse across the river at 225 Morgan Street. So make sure you do that. Again, City Hall, 1300 Perdido Street and Algiers Courthouse, 225 Morgan Street. Voters who need help finding their poll locations can call 504-658-8300. Again, voters who need any help finding their polling locations, please call 658-8300. So I don't want to hear that. I couldn't find where to go because I gave y'all the number. That's the good life. One more time. 504-658-8300. And if you don't know, call here at WBOK and we'll give you the number again. So that's really no reason. And last but not least, before we jump into the conversation, ceasefire with all of these massacres. And, you know, and we only hear about when it only gets big and the conversation gets really big when, you know, there's so many people that are killed and there's mass shootings. But there are killings every day. There are shootings every day. There are armed robberies every day. So we want to cease fire tonight from 5 to 7 p.m. at Kenilworth in the East. Get the guns off the street. OT, your man in the morning, is going to be there giving a speech. So let's go out and support him. Tonight, cease fire, 5 to 7 p.m. at Kenilworth Park. Get the guns off the street. That's right off Morrison, y'all. Cease fire, 5 to 7 p.m. at Kenilworth tonight. OT will be speaking. Let's go support those who support us. So, before, and speaking of supporting those who support us, Callie Roy and Evacuteer.org absolutely 100 and gazillion percent support us because they want to make sure that we are safe. Absolutely. When, I don't want to say when, when it all goes up in arms, let's say, because I was about to use something else, but I try to be, you know, have etiquette on the radio. So, uh, Callie, can you please give me just a little bit about what the organization is? Because I know a lot of people hear about it, but we really want to make sure everybody understands exactly what it's about. Absolutely. So we were founded in 2009 um, after... 2008's Hurricane Gustav, and we had a, had to learn a lot of lessons about this new uh, public-assisted option for those who cannot afford to evacuate on their own right. during a mandatory evacuation for right. usually it's like a Category 3 storm or higher, okay. hurricane or higher. Um, so at that time, there were small uh, signs at all of the pickup points. We actually have 17 in this city, and a lot of people didn't really know where those so were. So there's 17 pickup places. Yes. And they didn't know what to bring, didn't know where exactly to meet, right. how this process was going to work because it's new. Right. And even if you think about the history of New Orleans and the fact that now it has been around for 10 years, right. that's still really new. Exactly. Right, right, <laughs> And right. news here right. sometimes travels fast. Sometimes. It depends <laughs> on what the news is. It'll travel fast if it's, you know. It depends right. on what the news <laughs> is. So um, we 
essentially started because our founder, Robert Fogarty, was working in the mayor's office at the time during Gustav, and he um, – was put in charge of these ad hoc volunteers who were typically made up of a lot of AmeriCorps members. And he assembled people who came out of the woodworks and said, here, you can go out to these spots and you can help people get registered and get on these buses so that we can get them a safe ride out of town. And and these buses will take individuals to um, state and regional shelters. And so what we specifically do is assemble a volunteer corps that is a reserve for the event that we have to do this again um, during a mandatory evacuation. So I will go out and train approximately 500 people each year. No big deal. (laughs) We're actually at 543 as of this week, which is wonderful. We love overachievers here on The Good Life. Yes. So, uh, and this year was a lot, a lot of that had to do with the fact that it was K-10 and we had a ton of people who really wanted to be a part of of this mission, especially now. Right. So and you have to take advantage of the timing. You really do, quite frankly. And it's right. a nonprofit, so right. we're certainly not going to be like, huh, no, we don't need you this year. Exactly. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> we're always happy to get who we can, especially those who are ingrained in their community and want to serve um, if, if this happened. So we ask those volunteers to serve a seven-hour shift okay. at their site. So like I said, there's these 17 evacue spots. And you'll always be able to tell where they are because we have the 14-foot statue. It's a stainless steel statue of the guy with his hand in the air. Looks like he's hailing a cab <laughs> or catching a bead, depending on the season. Right, exactly. And I like the catching the bead. I do, too. I do, too. <laughs> I hope to have, like, a fun decorating contest later next oh, year, right? Okay. Don't you think that would be yes. um, so we, I'll come back and announce it here. Yes, I will. So, um the, essentially, those are the sites that you want to look out for if you are one of the approximately 35,000 individuals who we estimate may not have access to get out of town. So right. we want to make sure that people know that they can line up there in, during a mandatory evacuation and there will be a bus to come pick them up. Um, and in addition to that, you know, we also let folks know what to bring. Part of our mission is to get the word out about Hey, you can bring your pets, by the way. We have really? a plan for your pets. Yes, please do not leave your your dog and cat at home or your snake or your, your you know, weird I have, I have, turtle. <laughs> I have five bearded dragons. Oh, good. Well, <laughs> guess what? I have an aquarium. <laughs> yeah. I can yep. bring the aquarium. If you can carry it, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll work it out. We can work it out. But the, fu- <laughs> the fact of the matter is, that's you're not the first one. Somebody once told me a story about 18 finches, and I was like, okay, <laughs> do we'll you have cages out. and right. hands to carry? I guess we can. I mean, they quite frankly, we, we would have to figure that out. But um, yes, so no one, no one should have an excuse to stay home. You know, right. working on the preparedness culture here is essential to our mission as well, because we talk about how the culture of New Orleans had not even focused on really having that secondary plan. What's plan A? Great. Plan A doesn't work out. What's plan B? Right. Do you have a plan B? You know, let's say that your parents' house in Memphis burns down a month before, you know, you get to evacuate. That's a terrible worst case scenario I just named. But there are things. Like say there's an accident on that on that main thoroughfare and you can't even use that anymore. Exactly. You know, you and yeah. And look, and that happens. Right. That does happen, (laughs) unfortunately. So I'm talking about those, of course, who don't have a ride. But looking at those who do have a ride. And I mean, I talk to individuals often. Oh, Oh, yes, absolutely. And. And there's not only a plan for those who are able-bodied, but we also have the the special needs registry, too. Which is really important for a lot of our listeners because some listeners, you know, are really – some of our listeners are, you know, this is their their way to get all of their information. And so knowing that there are people in groups and organizations out there to help them, especially in that time of need, because you feel really vulnerable. Not only that, but, you know, I – think that we make a mistake in only communicating the necessary pieces of this plan when you're in the thick of it. Right. And you don't I think that people need time to wrap their minds around what they're going to do. You need time to prepare because right. you have to be comfortable with your plan. Right. And and you get uncertainty And uh, the fact that a process has not been demystified to you as a reason 
to right. just kind of curl up in a ball. Exactly. And, and say, people are oh. anxious. Yes. And they freeze and there's fear and then mm-hmm. they don't do anything. And, then they and that's don't the do last anything. thing we want you to do. We want you to move. Yeah. And we want you to know what you can bring ahead of time. You know, bring your one bag. Um, make sure you have any of your medical supplies or your medications in that bag. You know, prepare for three days as far as clothes and things go. But it can't be terribly big. It's about the size of a carry on if you're going to the airport. Oh, okay. Um, but you can bring your personal item and a diaper bag doesn't count or um, an oxygen if you have oxygen that doesn't count uh, we also have four out of those 17 locations are senior center locations so oh, they're wow. indoors oh wow and That's you're even a- better they're able to uh, of course <laughs> it's hot and oftentimes a neighbor might be able to drop you off even if they can't take you out of town you know talk to your neighbors essentially um, make sure that you do have an open dialogue about what people will do in the event of especially if they're older and they're more vulnerable and you know that and you sense that they may not have options um, because we always have community members who are those people who will right. do that, you know, oh, and absolutely. I just want to make sure that we rally them up and say, please do talk to your neighbors. And they can register on th- for that on 311 okay. or call 311 rather. Yeah. So if they need help with any of, of all of these things, yes. they can call 311. Yes. Y'all hear that? All of 311, those 311, 311. So we will say that throughout the course of these next couple of minutes, but yeah. 311, 311, 311. Yes. So if someone wanted to get involved in the program as a volunteer, how would they do that? So I host, I host round year trainings. At the moment, we're in a lull because we just went through all of the trainings of the season. But um, I'll start picking that back up as we get into spring. And then we will go full force and you'll see these public trainings. We usually hold them at the Rose F. Keller Library in Broadmoor. um, But you'll see a couple of others at other libraries. That's typically where we hold them. You can always email me. Our website is evacuteer, E-V-A-C-U-T-E-E-R dot org. And uh, all of our information is on there. And you'll find a lot of this same information I'm relaying to you on that website as well. well. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's NOLA Ready, the NOLA Ready website. um, That's uh, it's ready.nola.gov. I know it's it's hard. Took me a second. (laughs) No, no, I totally get it. Um, And also, what is the average age of the of the volunteers that you're looking for? Because, you know, sometimes it can, you know. It varies. I was about to say that. Uh, quite a bit, actually. So we um, a huge. So we actually get our volunteers from different places in that we work with approximately uh, just over 20 partner groups within New Orleans who are also nonprofit organizations that are consistently working in the community. Okay. Because we're a reserve volunteer corps, you can imagine it might be difficult to keep people engaged. Hey, we didn't have uh, any sort of issue this year. Thank the Lord. Right, exactly. But <laughs> I did not get to see you, and you may forget we exist. I understand right, that. You know right, what I mean? Right. And And quite frankly, staying in the in the spotlight, you know, this was a year for us because of obvious reasons and a lot of pu- right. publicity around that. But normally, on a normal year, we're, we, would, we keep we getting further and further away from that we event. We prefer and quite, not having to use of course. you. We like to, it's like insurance. I know. Evacuteer.org is like insurance. Exactly. We like to make sure that you're there. And speaking <laughs> of, it, no, but seriously, yes. it's like, you know, you, you have your plan. You yes. don't really want to use it. Correct. You know, we don't really want to evacuate, but we we all saw the importance of it during Katrina, Gustav, and, you know, throughout the wet, the right. Gulf Coast, Ike, and everything else that hit us. Yeah. You know, and that sometimes they hit back to back to back. What are you going to do if they do hit back to back? Um, how long is the season? You know, when can we kind of, like, exhale and be like, okay, sure. we're good for a couple months? So the season is... It starts June 1st. It ends November 30th. But within that, we have that peak hurricane season, which is like mid-August to about mid-October. And we're always going to be keeping ourselves prepared in that time. So we're getting out of it. We're getting to that to that tail end of the of the scary part of the year uh, right now. And to sorry, I didn't answer your question about the volunteer ages. The point is uh, over 18. It ranges from over 18 to about. 65 to 70 years old and we wow. have a huge lump in of course the the 20s and 30s it tapers off a little bit and then it actually increases when we get to our our senior citizens age so it's wonderful that you can easily you know fit in no matter your your age range as an adult and last but not least you are an npm member so how did you get involved in the organization how did evacuteer and npm kind of like merge and kind of grow this wonderful union this started out with 
Robert being in the mayor's office at the same time as Timelin, and wow. therefore a friendship emerged out of that. And when um, so, with getting involved with with NPN was, I think, the step that they took together and making sure that Evacuteer had the resources it needed mm-hmm. because it was a baby and it was a seedling and it needed right. to grow. And I think Timelin offered that soil and water and got it going with but with she Robert does that with and so his many, group. It, NPN yeah. has been able to do that with so many organizations and help them grow and kind of kind of get on their feet. Exactly. Exactly. And introducing to other organizations, I think, is the main piece of that I, and, and making sure that we were staying relevant and involved with what is currently going on. I mean, keeping relevant, essentially. I think what I've learned, especially with MPN, is we can't do it alone. Correct. And we all need someone yes. to help. And that was actually one of the conversations that we had on Wellness Wednesday was asking for help. And that's what a lot of organizations sometimes need to do and reach out. So if you're an organization and you need help you know, to take that next step, make sure you reach out to MPN and Timelin because they do great work. And make sure that you reach out to evacuateer.org if you know someone who needs help getting out of town, you know, make sure that you make that call and make sure that you check on them. Or if you're one of those persons who need help going out of town, you know, evacuteer.org. Or if you're someone who wants to volunteer to help someone get out of town, make sure that you go to evacuteer.org. I want to thank um, Kaylee Roy for being here. She is so wonderful. And I want to invite you back because when we, you know, throw beads at all of this, at all of this, at all of the sites, I want to make sure that we're doing that. So this (laughs) is The Good Life with Eileen. We will be right back with Calvin Mackey. Thank you so much. And stay tuned. Are you looking for a better way to get fit? Bored with the same old routines? Looking for results or a way to instill discipline in the kids? Tiger Rock Martial Arts is the answer with Taekwondo, kickboxing, and self-defense classes. Tiger Rock diversifies your training in ways that allows individuals of all ages and fitness levels to feel like a champion. Join Tiger Rock today, TigerRockNola.com, or 504-455-9694. That's 504-455-9694. With a three-class starter pack, starting for only $38, which includes your training uniform. Learn, grow, and succeed with Tiger Rock's three convenient locations, Old Metairie, West Bank, and Clearview. There's no better time to start gaining strength, skills, and protection for life than now. 504-455-9694. 504-455-9694. See you on the mat. Hello? I need help. My hair is a mess and my man texts me telling me to be ready for eight. He has a surprise. What am I going to do? My stylist takes forever. I got you. Call Ringlet Salon. I just left there. Where? Ringlet Salon. They took me within minutes and had me in and out in no time. Very professional and I scheduled online at ringlets.com. For real? Girl, for real. Does Ringlet Salon hook up your roots? Looks like I got a perm and you know I'm anti-chemicals. Ringlet Salon has my hair soft and bouncy. I'm getting the Brazilian Blowout Express next week. It eliminates frizz for six weeks. Six weeks? Okay, I'm all about Ringlet Salon. Where are they located? Ringlet's has two locations, one at 4712 Paris Avenue and one in the Hilton Hotel on the river. That location validates parking for four hours and is open on Sunday. Perfect for a working woman like me. That's all I needed to know. I'm going to be fresh for my man. You will if you schedule your appointment at ringlets.com. That's R-I-N-G-L-E-T-T-S dot com. Bye. Go and make my appointment with Ringlet Salon now. Eric Caulfield represents a new kind of leadership for the state Senate. He's honest, independent, dedicated to public service, and his qualifications are impeccable. Eric is a Morehouse man, graduating Phi Beta Kappa and earned his master's and Ph.D. degrees from MIT. He was appointed by President Barack Obama to serve as a White House fellow and served as chief policy advisor to former Newark Mayor Cory Booker. He's an urban planner, scientist, inventor, loyal Democrat, and today, a candidate for the Louisiana State Senate. Eric's work for President Obama here in New Orleans resulted in $4 million in construction jobs, street improvement, housing for nearly 70 homeless New Orleanians, and a renewed commitment to helping the people he wants to serve. That is why I went into government, to get things done. I'm Eric Caulfield, and I'll bring a new kind of leadership to the state Senate. Vote for Eric Caulfield, number 41, State Senate District 4, paid for by the committee to elect Eric Caulfield. 
This is U.S. Congressman Cedric Richmond asking you to support John Bell Edwards for governor. The best way to know what someone will do in the future is to look at what they have done in the past. In the military, John Bell Edwards fought for our safety and our security. Over the last eight years in the legislature, John stood up to Bobby Jimmy and fought for raising the minimum wage, equal pay, and expanding health coverage to our working families. John Bell also fought gender as he dismantled and destroyed higher education. On the other hand, his Republican opponents did nothing to stop gender then and will enact the same failed policies if elected. We need a governor that is more concerned with our paychecks than being president, and a governor that will serve the people and not himself. John Bell Edwards is that person. Please join me, Congressman Cedric Richmond, in voting for a proven fighter for us. Democrat John Bell Edwards for government. Paid for by Louisiana Families First. Universal Printing in New Orleans East is the place to go for all of your digital printing needs. Universal Printing offers a wide range of printing services and promotional products. They handle everything from business cards to personalized prescription pads. They even print yard signs, banners, and vehicle magnets. Stop by Universal Printing at 9900 Lake Forest Boulevard in New Orleans East near Reed. Or give them a call at 504-244-1177. That's 504-244-1177. Come on down to Universal Printing and let the experts handle all of your printing, marketing, and promotional needs so you don't have to. Listen to WBOK 1230 AM anywhere in the world. Live at www.wbok1230am.com. WBOK 1230 AM, talk radio in New Orleans. Welcome to the good life. Uh. Welcome to the good life. The wait is over. The wait is officially over. We are back Welcome in studio with Dr. Calvin Mackey. I am so excited that he is here today because we are going to open your minds to living differently in the world. That's exactly what we do here. He is visiting today to discuss entrepreneurship and kind of just give us a little insight as to what he does. I have a question for all of you. Have you taught your child how to make money? Have you taught your child how to make money? I know you have. Oh, yeah. My kids know how to make money. Exactly. I know you have. But listeners, have you taught your child to make money? Why not? Or if not, why not? If not, they will always work for someone else unless they are taught differently. Dr. Mackey is a critically acclaimed author, an internationally renowned motivational speaker, and a successful entrepreneur. He challenges the thinking of business people, government officials, educators, and students. And today he is challenging you to live the good life. You know, the secret to making money isn't always working at a high-paying job. It's finding creative solutions to people's problems. It doesn't always take a fancy degree to do that. Everyone is meant to do different things in their lives. To get your creative juices flowing, we want, you know, to open your mind. And, Dr. Mackey, that's exactly why I have you here. Because we were talking, you know, and I think we've gotten to be kind of cool because our, our sons play basketball together. On the same and, team. Yeah, on the so same you, team. So your big boy won't knock my little boy over now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't help that. He's taller than me now, so you know, he's taller than me now. So it's really funny. But you know, we do, we do have two young sons, and especially black young boys. There it is. And we need to teach them differently. We need to teach them about a place called America, there you something go. called capitalism. In the 21st century, you got to have skills to pay the bills. The man and woman who doesn't have skills ask people how much they pay. The man and woman who does have skills tell people how much they charge. Mm. I am so tired of meeting educated people with no skills, can't do nothing. And the bottom line is that we have to raise our kids not only to become educated, but also to get skills such that they can provide a service in a place called America such that when they provide that service, then money will come their way. It's not about the money. It's about the service. And you provide good service, money will follow that service. Many of us trying to get a job so we can make some money with no skills. Right. And I will be for you. Keep talking about 52% of all black males uh, unemployed in the city of New Orleans and all that. My keep, my question keep coming back. What skills do they possess? There you go. What, what skills? skills do they possess? Right. Because a lot of times we teach our children to work hard. They can work hard, but do they learn how to make money? That's two different things. Many of our kids know how to work hard at nothing. 
That's true. They know how to work hard at the PlayStation. They know, they know how to work <laughs> right. hard at the Xbox. They know how to work hard at the at, at the second line. They know how to work hard at, at the Saints tailgate. They know how to work hard watching LSU. But they don't know how to work hard when it's time to work hard when it translates into money getting into their pocket. And that is the ethic that we have to bring back to our community. That's the ethic that we have to put into our children now. What makes me mad now, I don't see children cutting grass. Mm. I, I don't see children watching. Well, I don't see children watching cars. I get so upset when I see kids on the corner begging for money for their little sports team. Mm. I was just having this conversation yesterday. No, if you want to, if, if you want, if you want my money, let's go over here and you do something for it. I want to, I want to create something called a community trust. And I'm, I've gone around to people and I'm asking them to put money in. And it's, it's going to be called a community trust. And all these grassroots organizations, they can get a matching grant if they bring money to the table based on something that they have done. Oh. Not big for. Hello. You see, now that's how we train our people. That's how you engage the community. That's how you incentivize our kids to understand how you take a, a dollar in a dream, as J. Cole was saying, turn it into something bigger. So if a team needed, I mean, for example, if a team needed $1,000 to go out of town with their kids and their kids did a car wash and raised $500, the trust we would matching. be able to match it and we then they could go do it. That's right. But that's if they amazing. stand on a corner and beg for $500, you get nothing. You get nothing. You know, that's kind of how the world works, though. That is the world. <laughs> that's Already. exactly right. Exactly. And that's why we're having this conversation. And speaking of it, you've traveled all over the world. Give us a little bit more about your background. Uh, I'm from Backertown, Girttown, Zion City, born in Uptown, New Orleans, on Earhart and Audubon, Charity Hospital Baby. is scar on my head. <laughs> then we moved around here around Gentilly. Grew up in Stallings Park from the time I was 7 to 12 years old. Played every sport. Stallings Park. I used to get my hustle on right in front of the fairgrounds selling candy. I used to win the candy drive every year because I used to stand outside <laughs> the uh, the thing and buy, you know, sell but all my candy. But you were a young entrepreneur. I was a young entrepreneur. I used to cut grass for like, I believe I was washing cars for $5, cutting grass for $10. And I then I hired my friends and I'd give my friends $5 to cut yards. And I was I would make a $5 off every yard that my that my kids cut. Literally, when I graduated from high school, I had $2,000 in cash under my bed. My mom and dad said, look, boy, Hello. what you doing with all this cash in the house? And they took it, said they was going to hold it from me. I never got it back. Oh, <laughs> we want that to look. Uh, but but <laughs> the bottom line is that grew up in New Orleans, left, went to Morehouse. After Morehouse, I went to Georgia Tech. I was at Morehouse in Georgia Tech for 11 years, got four degrees, BS in math, BS, MS, PhD in mechanical engineering. 1996 came back to New Orleans and became a professor at Tulane in mechanical engineering. First and only African American ever tenured in the history of the College of Engineering at Tulane University. So literally, my life. So when people say they're against education, I'm like, you crazy. I got, I got four degrees. Right. It's not the fact that the education ain't the problem. It's your mindset. Wow. All absolutely. Right? The problem is the mindset, not not whether or not you go get a four-year degree or a two-year degree. I push STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics because that's the currency of the 21st century where people don't realize 80, 83% of all STEM jobs required, require at most a two-year degree from Delgado. Can Delgado. you break down what STEM is for someone who may not STEM understand? STEM is an acronym in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and that's all the different things that come under that. That's from the making of tennis shoes, the designing of tennis shoes, the designing of fragrances. All, and the, kid, all the things our kids really all love and just kids, don't know that they the, love. You know, the computer games, the technology, the cars they ride in. If you're making it, if you're creating it, if you're innovating it, that really much comes under STEM. Pharmacy, medicine, research, uh, plumbing, being an electrician, mechanic, all of that is considered all of, all of that is considered STEM. Because believe it or not, the basic requirements, people saying, well, everybody ain't made to go to college. Right? I say, well, you know what? The basic knowledge that your kid need to go to college is the basic knowledge your kid need to go get a skill. Right. <laughs> I mean, ExxonMobil paying kids with, with one year, two years from their seventy five to to $100,000 to work in their plants. But you still got to know chemistry. Right. You still got to know some, some, some right. basic science. Right. So the bottom line is that, you know, my goal is this, Eileen, in a nutshell. We have no problems putting a football in a million black kids' hands every Saturday. Hello. We have no problem putting basketballs in a million black boys' hands every Saturday. You're we right. have no problem encouraging a million little black kids to run track every Saturday. My goal is to put STEM in the hands of a million black kids every Saturday so that they don't dream about being one of the 260 in football that get drafted and become millionaires, so they don't dream about one of the 50 that get drafted in basketball becoming millionaire, so that they won't be the one that win a gold medal and become a millionaire. If they had STEM in their hands, they could dream about being one of the 14 million millionaires in the world or one of the 1,850 billionaires in the world. Now, that's a dream. That's a mindset. That's a goal. And speaking of STEM, I know you have something going on this weekend, correct? Yep. We're, second Saturday of every month, we have a big STEM program called STEM Saturdays with Dr. Mackey. 
Last month we were at uh, at at Sanchez in the Lower Night Walk. We had over 300 people, and our kids made wow. hovercrafts and learned about friction. They had little motors. They made things that flew across the floor with 70 different volunteers from companies in the city working with them and 50 college students from Xavier, Dillard, and UNO. Tomorrow we'll be at the cutoff uh, in Lower Algiers. We got 130 kids. We know registered. where that is because Harrell used to always beat them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I actually sponsored the cutoff some shirts <laughs> with you. But you can have 130 kids registered already, and it's going to be Save Our Cities, uh, Flooding, Erosion, and Levees. They're going to learn about flooding and erosion, and they're going to build their own little city out of monopoly houses and green turf. And then they're going to take mud, clay, rocks, and sand, and they're going to build levees. And the person who levy uh, holds the most water wins $50. So our kids are going to learn about the environment that they're living in, unlike pre-Katrina. And you know what I really love about STEM, and I, I'm, you know, I research every topic that mm-hmm. we talk about. You know, I believe that our children are really taught that failure is a bad thing, mm-hmm. and that you know every failure ca- carries. But I feel that every ca- failure carries with it a seed of equal or greater benefit of opportunity to learn something from. So yes, it's it may be a stumbling block, but it doesn't have to be the end. We need to teach our children to not give up, and that failure isn't. The end of all. It's the beginning. As a matter of fact, STEM, STEM teaches us that failure is necessary. There's something called engineering process, and within that process, it's failure when it doesn't. So on our STEM Saturdays, the kids love it because it's not school 2.0. They don't get graded. <laughs> if they're making a car and the car doesn't run, and a young lady sitting there and her car is running, the little boy will know why his car isn't running. Well, right. you know why? You didn't do something right. right. So the engineering process tells us we have to go back and look at what we did and get it right. So that's why the kids love coming out. Uh, that's called grit, when you can stick with something and stick with something until you make it work. And to come out and see these kids stick with something and then get it working and see their face light up, literally we've seen parents cry because they know how the kids have been beat down in the educational system. Exactly. And for the first time they see genius in their, their son or their daughter. And that's why we've engaged 3,000 kids in less than two years from 225 different schools and people asking how. How is because we've created a supportive environment where they feel like it's for them, it's by them, nobody's beating them down, and this is for me. If I don't get it right the first time, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And if you don't get it right the second time, it's okay. It's, it's okay. But what if we learn that lesson, even us as adults? You know, we have that problem with the fear of failure and, and trying to be perfect. I know I had it for a long time, and it's something I'm still working on. But I'm like, the never give up mentality is so important. And if we instill it in our children, what a different world we could live in. Well, I've been on this radio show before, and I've talked about our collective state of low self-esteem. Right. A lot of issues in the black community pretty much have to do with low self-esteem or low, uh, low collective self-esteem. So, therefore, as kids, you know, the kids can, can fail. It's almost like you I often say, why when we, we walk on a ledge, we walk on a ledge, we fall off the little six-inch curve, we get back on it. <laughs> we walk on a six-inch ledge, we fall off, we get back on it as a kid. But then we get to, you know, like high school, and we see the little girl, the ballerina, the boy on the little, the, the little thing three feet high, and we say we're not going to get on that. And then, mm-hmm. you know, it's still six inches. Right. All right? All right? So then as we get older, as we go on top of buildings, we had a cocktail party, we don't walk on that ledge because we know the failure. The failure, the failure is going to hurt worse. So as we get older, we become more fearful of showing our vulnerability to the world mm-hmm. that, we, that, that we failed. Mm-hmm. You know, and I wear my failure like, you know, I always talk about starting school and remedial reading. I wear my failures like a badge because my failures. Never trust a man or woman that'll tell you about their successes without telling you about their failures. That's the punk oh, sucker. Wait, wait, wait. Say that right? one more time. Never trust a man or woman that'll tell you about their successes but will not tell you about their failures because the lessons didn't come from the success. The lessons come from the lessons come from the, the failure. failure. And that's so important because, you know, our children in, or try to emulate us. You know, they watch us and they, they see how we interact and, you know, they want to do that. So if we can teach them that failure is okay, then that's the good life because they will open their minds to living differently in the world. Another thing that I wanted to talk about with children and growing their entrepreneurship is, you know, goal setting. And I know that's part of what the STEM is. You know, at the beginning, you're like, we're going to do these steps and this is what you're going to get in the, the right. outcome. And it's, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a micro goal setting tool, basically. Yep. And with goal setting, goal setting got to be derived. We have to teach our kids to look for opportunity, to provide a service. Now, that's what I tell my sons. My sons right now, I have a, two sons, 10 and 12 years old. We live on a golf course. I don't even play golf. So all these golf balls are coming in my backyard. Mm-hmm. So my sons say, it was, it was lemonade day, i never forget. And we were riding around here to one of my other little nephews' lemonade stand. Mm-hmm. So they helped him sell lemonades. So on the way home, at the time, my little 8-year-old said, Daddy, I don't want to own a lemonade stand. They got too many lemonade stands. 
I said, you got it, son. He learned a lesson. You got it, son. Uh-huh. So all the way home, they, they had a conversation, an eight and a ten year old, about what type of business they could have. And they came up with the idea that they could sell the golf balls that they collect in the backyard. Mm-hmm. So literally now they have M M&M, and M, Miles and Mason recycle golf balls. Oh, I love it. And we direct market to my friends who do play golf because they and they can buy the golf balls. Right. So now I've taught them three D printing. So now they know how to print on a three D. They've designed their own golf tee. So now if you buy 12 golf balls, you get a a, a, a 3D printed golf tee that's guaranteed <laughs> not to break. So now our financial planner is buying the golf tees from them, mm. and she gives her other clients the golf tee with a little postcard with their picture on it talking about these budding entrepreneurs. So my son saw an opportunity and filled that opportunity, and they're making money and putting it in a bank. It's funny because that was my next point of making sure that we, you know, kids learn how to recognize opportunities. And that's what I did when I saw you. I was like, this is an opportunity for us to open people's minds to living differently in the world. And it, and it's not just the kids. You know, sometimes we need to take a ba- step back and see what opportunity can we have to, you know, start something on the side and that may grow or will grow. And so that you can get out from the day-to-day rat race. But we're going to discuss more of that when we get back from the break. I have Dr. Calvin Mack here and we're talking about entrepreneurship and growing things and teaching people how to make money. We'll be right back. Hello? I need help. My hair is a mess and my man texts me telling me to be ready for eight. He has a surprise. What am I going to do? My stylist takes forever. I got you. Call Ringlet Salon. I just left there. Where? Ringlet Salon. They took me within minutes and had me in and out in no time. Very professional and I scheduled online at ringlets.com. For real? Girl, for real. Does Ringlet Salon hook up your roots? Looks like I got a perm and you know I'm anti-chemicals. Ringlet Salon has my hair soft and bouncy. I'm getting the Brazilian blowout express next week it eliminates frizz for six weeks six weeks okay i'm all about ringlet salon where are they located ringlets has two locations one at 4712 paris avenue and one in the hilton hotel on the river that location validates parking for four hours and is open on sunday perfect for a working woman like me that's all i needed to know i'm gonna be fresh for my man you will if you schedule your appointment at ringlets.com that's r-i-n-g-l-e-t-t-s dot com. Bye. Go and make my appointment with Ringlet Salon now. Sick and tired. We're all sick and tired of Bobby Jundle cutting our schools, keeping tens of thousands from getting health care while he runs for president. That's why so many of us are voting for Democrat John Bell Edwards. John Bell Edwards is the only candidate for governor who supports an increase in the minimum wage, who voted for equal pay for women, and John Bell stood up to Bobby Jindal when he attacked our hospitals and universities. David Vitter and the Republicans all oppose even a small minimum wage increase and equal pay for women. They would be just like Bobby Jindal, and we can't have that. Election Day is Saturday, October 24th. Early voting starts October 10th and goes through October 17th. If you are sick and tired of Bobby Jindal, vote for Democrat John Bell Edwards. Paid for by Louisiana Families First. Not paid for or authorized by any candidate or candidate committee. Are you looking for a better way to get fit? Bored with the same old routines? Looking for results or a way to instill discipline in the kids? Tiger Rock Martial Arts is the answer with Taekwondo, kickboxing, and self-defense classes. Tiger Rock diversifies your training in ways that allows individuals of all ages and fitness levels to feel like a champion. Join Tiger Rock today, TigerRockNola.com or 504-455-9694. That's 504-455-9694 with a three-class starter pack starting for only $38, which includes your training uniform. Learn, grow, and succeed with Tiger Rock's three convenient locations, Old Metairie, West Bank, and Clearview. There's no better time to start gaining strength, skills, and protection for life than now. 504-455-9694. 504-455-9694. See you on the mat.
New Orleans Masters of Groove, the Funky Meters, will team up with the legendary Alan Toussaint, Walter Wolfman Washington, and New Orleans' own Queen of Soul, Irma Thomas, at the deliciously entertaining Crescent City Blues and Barbecue Festival, October 16th through 18th at Lafayette Square. This free festival is family-friendly and is powered, produced, and presented by the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Foundation. This very unique blues festival will include some of the best art exhibits and barbecue in the South with more than 40 local vendors. Vegetarian, vegan, and gluten-free options are available, as well as bread pudding and peach cobbler for dessert. If you're hungry for great music, food, and fun, make sure that you visit us on the web at jazzandheritage.org for a scheduled lineup of all artists performing at the 10th annual Crescent City Blues and Barbecue Festival to be held in Lafayette Square, October 16th. 18th through 18th. You're on the move and so is your bank. Liberty Bank now offers you the power to manage your money from the palm of your hand with mobile banking with Liberty Bank. Whether you need to check balances, transfer money, or view transactions, mobile banking at Liberty Bank allows convenient and secure access to your money. Enroll today at www.LibertyBank.net and download our mobile app. You can mobile bank at Liberty Bank to keep the power in your hands. Liberty Bank, there's freedom here. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. You're tuned into the voice of the people. WBOK 1230 AM, where it's real talk for real times. Welcome to the good life. Uh. Welcome to the good life. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome back to the good life. We are here on the Good Life Friday where we open your mind to living differently in the world. We inspire you and we warm your heart and we warm your soul. I am here with Dr. Calvin Mackey. And we are doing just that. We are talking about entrepreneurship. We're talking about our children. We're talking about growing generational wealth. We're about instilling in our children how to make money and those skill sets that are going to bring them a different life. Because sometimes we just have a closed mind. But do you really want that for the rest of your life? You have one life. What are you going to do with it? Before we jump back in the conversation, I want to remind everybody, because, yes, we do have one life. And you need to pay attention to what's going on in policy. And early voting is starting Saturday, October 10th. That is tomorrow. All locations for early voting will be closed on Sunday because, you know, we got to go watch the Saints of NFL football. So that's only Saturday to next Saturday, October 17th at City Hall, 1300 Perdido Street and Algiers Courthouse at 225 Morgan Street. If you need help finding your polling location, you can call 504-658-8300, 504 Six five eight eighty three hundred, and it's time that we cease fire. There is too much violence in our city, our region, in our world. So there's a ceasefire tonight from five to seven p.m. at Kenilworth Park in the East. Let, y'all, let's get the guns off the street. It is time. How many of these massacres, how many of these shootings, how many of these armed robberies do we have to do? You can't cut your grass. You can't go eat. You can't sit at a bar. You can't do anything without getting robbed. It's time to get the guns off the street. OT will be speaking tonight. It's ceasefire at Kenilworth Park with 5 to 7 p.m. Make sure you're there. Let's support those who support us, and let's go support OT tonight. Mr. Mackey. Dr. Mackey, let me say, because he has four degrees, so obviously there's no reason not to get one. <laughs> it's all good. No, 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 seriously. No, seriously. You know, we were talking through the break about, you know, the different, you know, different things and, you know, letting children, you know, take advantage of become of becoming a leader. There's so many times we like to put our children in a box. And like you said, because we put our own selves in a box. So what do we need to do to stop this? Because we're on the good life. You know, we want to open people's mind to living differently in the world. And that's why they listen, because you know what? I've been doing this. It hasn't worked. What's the definition of insanity? Doing something over and over and again and getting the same result. Well, let's let's try something different. What do we need to do differently? At Stemnola, we talk about exposing, inspiring and engaging. We have to inspire our kids, but more importantly, we have to expose them. If we expose them, the inspiration going to come itself. A lot of times we don't get out of our own comfort zones. Hello. We don't do things <laughs> that otherwise uh, our relatives don't do or we don't do or so-called black people don't do. 
And that's where we need to be. We need to be bringing our kids to, to things other than the Saints games, other than the Hornets games, because there's other sports, individual sports, where we, where they can learn all different type of skills. Right. Putting our kids in, you know, for me, my kids play sports, and my kids playing sports ain't got nothing to do with them wanting to be the next NBA star. <laughs> my kids playing sports for recreation. Right. And that's why I see parents out there screaming like, uh, sports is not my kids' college fun. Right. I, I mean, so it, it's about being on a team and doing this and doing that, we take them to things that otherwise... Learning how to be a leader. Learning how to be a leader. Communicate. Learn. That's the four skills they're going to need in the 21st century. Critical thinking, collaboration, communication, and creativity. Hello. And that's why, you know, I hear parents all the time, I, my, you know, my kid's not interested in STEM. I say, why are your kids not interested in STEM? They've never done STEM before. Well, I wasn't good in math, but guess what? It's not genetic. Right. <laughs> as, as a matter of fact, if you didn't do good in math, then you, that should be your responsibility to take your son and daughter and put them in a situation so they don't have to go through life crippled like you are now. Exactly. See, so I challenge people to do better by their kids. And, and, and it's that special word, that word that we don't want to deal with called sacrifice. Hello. We don't want to sacrifice anymore for our kids. Mm. You know, so it's funny how people got money for everything but the children. The churches got money, thing, everything but for the children. The schools got money for everything but for the children. The city got money for everything but for the children. The, the children. What likes to get cut in our state budget? And, the children. And a community, a high-functioning community is child-centered, adult-governed, and elderly rule. There's a place for everybody. We keep talking about rights of passage and mentoring from boys to men. But nobody talking about rites of passage and mentoring from men to elders. There's a whole lot of men in our community who should be elders and still running around here acting like boys, let alone adults. Mm. And I'm not talking about no ex-con or ex-felon or somebody low wage. I'm talking about a whole lot of middle class people need to take their responsibility and do what they're supposed to do for their community. Absolutely. They'll do it for their children. Exactly, because it's one thing that you said at the beginning that we talk about on The Good Life all the time. The only difference that separates all of us is exposure. That's and right. just like you said, those boys, men, whomever, who you know may have learned something, they need to expose the younger generation to that so they don't have to learn from their – why re, reinvent the wheel? You know, and if you can teach somebody something and expose them to something – do it. So that's why we've created STEM NOLA, which is, I call it a high functioning STEM community. So we have the K-12 kids at the middle. We surround them with college kids and we pay the college kids so they don't have to go to McDonald's or Burger King or some other, mm. uh, low wage job. We pay them anywhere from $10 on up to come work with us and work with our kids. And then we surround them with STEM professionals. So literally now kids and parents are coming to our STEM programs and meeting professions and professionals that they've never even known exist. I mean, you may have a brother there with dreadlocks who's a, who's a, a PhD in analytical chemistry, beautiful sister with PhD in biochemistry or neuroscience. And the parents are going, wait a minute. Wow, like you can do it too. Wait, that, it, it begins to change the entire framework and vision of what the parents have for their kids. So literally these professionals stand up and they come dressed in shorts and tennis shoes. So you don't know if they're a parent or they're, people just don't know. Right. And when they stand up and tell a background and where they're from and what they've done. Miles drop. Miles drop wide open because <laughs> the, because the achievement does not meet the image. Right. And that's what parents need to see because when they look at their kids a lot of times, they see the same image on the news and they begin to believe what the media telling uh, them about their kids. And they need to see other people that look like their kids that are doing amazing things. Absolutely. And it's funny because we're talking about letting our children do different things. One of the conversations, we had this over the break as well, independence. Sometimes we don't let our children be independent. And I had this conversation with somebody one day, and they were like, I don't believe you're letting him do that. And it was something as simple as letting my child choose what color shoes he was going to wear. I was going to buy them. These are your options. Now choose which ones you want. Go. They were like, how are you, how are you going to let him choose his shoes? They're his feet. I'm giving him a level of independence where he can make a decision and feel confident about it and not have to look back at me and be like, is it okay? And you know they have those situations because, like, we, we, we're with our kids playing sports. And every time, there are some children, every time they make a mistake, they look in the crowd like, is That's it right. okay? Like, like they about to get it. We've, so crippled, you, we've, we've, crippled, crippled, our, we've crippled our children. Uh, I had my son in the truck the other day, and he just made it to the seventh grade. And I was thinking, I bring him to school every morning. So I rode around the corner right around here, and I said, your daddy used to catch the bus right here. Mm -hmm. I used to get off the bus right here, and I had to wait, you know, until a bus came such that it wasn't crowded I could get on. And literally some days I had to fight on a bus all the way down to that next bus stop by Easy Pack. And my point is that what that did for me was that it gave me uh, 
life skills that mm-hmm. otherwise are still used today in business, such that now we do so much for our children. We pick them up. We drop them off. They can't ride their bike anywhere. They can't go anywhere by themselves. We buy their clothes. We tell them when to get up. We tell them when to eat. We clean their clothes. We do this such that literally they become crippled adults. And a whole lot of adults right now really, like I say, can't do nothing. They can't even think their way out of a wet paper bag. <laughs> right. They, we, and I see them. I see them all the time, especially this, 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 you know, this generation from about 20 to 35. I mean, they are shot. They, I mean, this summer I had like 10 students working for me. And one came one day and I heard one telling them, man, if you're going to work for Dr. Mackey, you got to have tough skin. All right, if you, you got to have tough skin. And I came there and ripped into his behind. <laughs> and my point then was this is where you learn how to deal with the real world. I'm exactly. not here to baby y'all like your parents. Right. You know, and. You know, they, they're so used to their parents, baby. They come on a job. They don't want nobody to, you know, to demand stuff out of them, tell them they're not doing and good. And you're saying baby, but sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm giving kind of the, the flip side of that. It's you've never had to make a decision. So how do I make one? Sometimes you don't know how to make a decision because you've never had to make one. And let him or her make the wrong decision and deal with the consequences. And I ain't talking about no life-threatening things. Right. I'm talking about as simple as. You know, you come out and your clothes looking all crazy and you go out in public and get, get ribbed. I bet right. you you won't go back out the door looking like that. Right. <laughs> all right, you buy those u- ugly shoes you bought. Right. All right, now you got to wear them. You got to deal with that. <laughs> oh, my gosh, that is so funny. Um, I want to hit another part uh, of teaching our children how to sell. It's one thing, you know, how to work and go to work every day. But think about that. You're going to work every day. You don't you're not selling anything. But selling and marketing something is totally different. You know, in teaching our children that that's like the act of really making money. That's, that's the greatest. It's one of the greatest skills we could teach our kids. So I talked about critical thinking, communication, collaboration and creativity. At the end of that is now how do I sell this? Right. How do I get somebody to buy this? And we had this conversation the other day. I have another company and somebody made a big investment. And recently I went and they gave me another check. And I said, you know, thank you. I said, this this is going to be a success because, you you know, you, you're doing this. And he said, first I believed in you. He said, now I believe in a product. Mm. See, people buy you first. They don't mm. buy the product first. And when our kids can't sell, when they can't articulate, when they can't get their thought across, when they don't know how to frame a narrative such that people buy them, they're, they're done. Right. And, and and we have to work. We have to work at that. That is the way of the world. That ain't the way of white people. That ain't the way of, of, <laughs> right. of, of, of uptown. That is the way of the world. The world. And another, another thing we do, then we get to a certain degree, and we tell our kids, well, you got to know how to network. I, I'm so tired of people networking with nothing to offer. <laughs> you know, I'm networking, bro. I'm network. What you got to offer? Right. And how are you communicating that? And how are you Can communicating Can you deliver your that? point? Because I tell them, I say, look, if you ain't at the table, you're on the menu. Hello. And when you do come to the table, you got to bring more than a damn appetite. <laughs> bring more than appetite. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm having so much fun with you today. You're going to be a regular. You just don't even know it yet. And one of the last points I want to talk to, I know we're kind of rounding this out, but the art of giving back. After you you know, you, you have these, um, you've become successful, you, you are learning these skills, you have to give back. Just like we were talking about exposure. But you have to learn to give back and giving of yourself because when you give, it comes back in return. And, and here's, that's the issue. The problem, I just spoke in Saginaw, Michigan. I was the NAACP Freedom Front speaker Sunday before last in Saginaw, Michigan. And this is what I said to a thousand people in the audience. The problem in the black community is not that we don't have enough success. The problem in the black community is that we don't have enough significance. Mm. So you go from survival to success to significance. The people who've gotten out of the survival mode and became successful, they're just happy with being successful. Mm. So they go around and they peacock and they got on their suits and their big cars and their big houses saying, look at me, without realizing that there's another step you got to take and become significant. Now, when you're successful, that means you can take care of not only yourself, but those that's responsible for you. When you become significant, you begin to take care of the entire community, those that you don't even know. See, that's why you can't tell me nothing about LeBron James now. LeBron James has moved his mindset from that of of six. He was surviving in, in Akron. Now he became successful as a basketball player. Now he's moved he's to significant. being significant. He and significant. now he's creating a legacy such that people will always call his name because he's taking care of not his children. He's taking care of our, our children. children. And that's what this thing is about. So there's a whole lot of people in this city, a whole lot of people in this city that are successful. I give you that. Yeah, you're successful. Ooh, look at you. But you ain't <laughs> taking care of another damn kid that's not your own. And here's the deal. There's two types of forms of wealth since we're talking about making money. And we focused on the wrong type of form of wealth. There's two types of form of wealth. One form of wealth is making a, making money, and the other form of wealth is making a difference. Mm. The lowest form of wealth is making money. 
the highest form of wealth is making a difference. There have been people, billionaires, that died and nobody knew their name and never know their name again. But poor people have died and we built, built statues to them because they made a difference. a difference. And that is the giving back part. That is, you know, that is the giving back part. All you successful people, why your name ain't on a park? Why are you not sponsoring our kids? Why our kids, why our kids who want to be something got to go on the street corner and beg? Mm. I mean, because of you. I mean, if we was doing what other people was doing, when you go up down and see names on buildings and see what, uh, that wasn't no government grant. That wasn't, no, that was somebody who had become successful that wanted to become significant before they died. So there's three things we got to remember before we got get out of here, and I call it my can theory. And it's in my book, A View from the Roof, the can theory. Make as much money as you can, put it in a can, then sit on the can. Hello. When you do that, then you're in a position to make a difference and become significant. I want to invite you back, and we'll talk about your book next time. No problem. This is Eileen. This is The Good Life. This is um, The Good Life Friday. Tell us again, STEM tomorrow. STEM Saturday is at the, in Lower Algiers at the Cutoff Recreation Center. And it's open to the public to come and view now. And you can go online and register. All the free slots are gone. We let 100 kids free every month uh, through sponsorship from ExxonMobil and North, North Sea sponsoring like 30 kids. Uh, but you can come out and see our kids actually build levees and learn about levees in the environment in a way that you can't even imagine. And sometimes we have to take that first step. So take that first step and take your child and just go see what it's about. Come see. And then next time you can join. I ain't going to say this, but any kid walking the door, let them do stuff. Right? Well, see, look. I can't I, tell a kid take, no. Take that. Look, y'all take it. Take, you know, t- it's his heart, you know. I don't want to take, take advantage of it, but take advantage of his heart. And make sure, you know, we want to make a difference, but make a difference tomorrow. You can early vote starting tomorrow, October 10th. Early voting is through Saturday, October 17th. City Hall, 1300 Perdido Street, Algiers Courthouse. And voters who need help finding the poll, call 504-658-8300. And also, you really want to make a difference? Meet us at Kenilworth Park tonight between 5 and 7 p.m. OT will be there speaking. That's Oliver Thomas. You know who he is. He wakes us up every morning. Let's get the guns off the street because it's time that we cease fire. Tonight, 5 to 7 p.m. at Kenilworth Park. This is Eileen. This is The Good Life. And I'm out.